BC Cortina C. Welcome to another episode. Part two of the engine build. Could be hit with a storm, but undercover some of the cars are outside. Criminal! What can you do? Heavens have opened. He's a real thunderstorm. This is a real summer storm. It's been a long time since I've uh, seen storms like this, but we just keep on motoring. You're gonna say, roll the credit. Okay, part two of the engine swap. I'm going to talk first through, talk you through some of the new parts which I like to fit for reliability. If you have a decent carb, it's worth paying the price just to know you're good to go. So, a Weber carb is something I like to do. It's expensive, but it's worth it. A couple of fill ups in your tank, and you've paid for it. So we know about that, talked about that in part one of this of the film. This is part two part series fitting this engine. The other part I like to do is the cam belt tensioner wheel. That's another one, relatively cheap as well. You can get them with the kit, with the belt and a pump as a kit. So I got the kit, pump, belt and tensioner wheel. The pump itself, this one is a quality, I mean, it says top quality this, it's a BGA pump. These are some of the best pumps you can get. And just look at the quality of this pump. It's marked there, it's well cast. The impellers of good quality. The finish and the machining on it is good. It's not a Chinatown eBay 14 quid special. A good decent bearing as well that's an important part a lot of the cheap pumps leak a lot of the cheap pumps fail I've seen these just break down with cheap um, aluminium that's a steel impeller as opposed to the alley impeller so that one's of good quality also I like to replace the thermostat housing if it's showing signs of corrosion around the end because you can get little weepages of water there and you get a decent fit on your stat and, and of course a new stat and sealing kit important again to get a good quality sealing kit this rubber is important some of the cheaper rubbers what happens to them is they break down and then they don't seal inside here the rubber tends to squash out into the cavity there and you get water bypassing it and you don't get up to proper temperature a QH stat as well I think this is an 88 one they're stamped on them with the temperature although funny enough on this one I can't actually see the temperature stamp normally that would have on the bulb that's the bulb the brass thing normally at the end would have the the temperature on it 88 or 92 usually I think Anyway, the bulb faces the engine because that's sensing the water. So the spring side out, I hope I've got that right, I think so. That touches your water and then it'll open. If it was that way, you'd get a delay. It eventually would open, but it wouldn't be right. So that sits on that rubber. Then the circlip on top, holding it in. So it's important, you sorry it cut off then. It's important you get a good quality Stat as well, stat and rubber seal. That's a thick one. I've seen kind of thinner ones and ones with like a groove in them. And they're the ones that break down. This solid rubber one, this fits nicely into that machine surface there. Very nicely cut this. I actually don't know. I think this was from Burton's, this stat housing. So in we go. Like this. So that would be going... In conjunction all on the front so we're going to fit these items I found an alternator bracket don't really I've got one on the other car put that on anyway I'm not trying to make it too shiny these are the kits I think I ought to jumbled these ones they're a decent kit for fitting the stat and a decent gasket okay so that's all ready and then I'm going to talk to you about well seal this is the best 
jointing compound I think you can buy. I've never had a problem with this. It's just a great sealant. Okay, if you Google it, people swear by it. That's how I found it, by Googling. It's an old school setup. Squeeze from the bottom, don't get in trouble over your toothpaste tube with the wife at home, folks. Squeeze from the bottom. Well, that's that. So first install those components. We have got a fuel pump as well. I found a second hand one. I think it's okay. Here it is. No reason for it not to be. And there's two types of gasket for the fuel pump. Some, may, some of you may not know this, but later on they added a spacing block, a plastic insulating block, or it might be a fibrous material, should have one here somewhere, to space the pump away from the block to stop heat transfer going into the pump and causing fuel problems. I think it was either evaporation or cavitization, I'm not sure but they had a spacer block on here. Consequently, a slightly longer bolt holds it into the block. And also the push rod, which is installed inside the side of the engine block. By the way, you can lose those when you're spinning your engine, so keep them to one side. It's a push rod which sits on the auxiliary cam. And the push rod pushes on here, and that gives you the action. When you use the bigger spacer, you have to change the push rod to the longer type one. That's okay if you get it the wrong way round. If I fit this without the spacer and the push rod bar that's in the engine, oh, it's actually out at the moment, but sits in the engine. I'll show you that in a sec. Is uh, too long, it'll, it'll crush into this. You can get a terrible problem happening. So it's important. The rod I've got at the moment is 45 mil long. Now, I don't know if the short one's uh, 40 or the long ones, 50. I'm not sure what I've got. I'd have to check that. I can go on Burton's site because they sell them and I'll know that mine's 45. If Burton lists 40 and 45, we know we've got the longer one and, and so we would fit the insulating washer or um, gasket. If we've got the short one, we're gonna have to go without and it's straight to the block, okay? So that's it. We're going to get on, we'll move you in position, we'll fit the water pump, put the stag seal on the gasket, bolt it up, and then the thermostat housing, get them jobs out of the way. We need to start taking the engine out of KP soon, so bonnet off, and then all the auxiliary pipes and tubes and connectors off, battery disconnected, and get ready to get that engine hoisted out, because I need parts from that engine to complete this. This hasn't got a bottom flywheel, it's missing a few other parts. A ten, uh, the tensioner wheel bolt, lockdown bolt, the star-shaped bolt, they're hard to find and it's not got that, so I can't tension the cam belt up. It's going to have to be done when the engine's lifted out so it can raid all the bits. I can't take them off now because I've got to drive the car into position, so it's a bit of a catch-22. I'll first get this out of the way and fit that. Okay, stag seal would go on like this. Well, let's get that lock locked in first. We'll put that in first, because this is ready to rock. You do need pliers normally. Might snap him just by hand. I think we've got it. There we go. So that's ready. So now what you would do is you would just do this with a stag. So thin, it'll trickle out. Up the tube without pressing the tube. It's just applied like this. There's no point putting it on really thick because when you compress this up, it'll just squeeze it out anyway. So you just, I just do it like that. These are such good machined faces that probably would work without a gasket, but of course, we're not going to do that. That is it. Then this face, of course. You don't have to actually follow the 
perimeter because you're tapping it with your finger so you're doing it anyway our oh, ice cream man is out thunderstorms predicted today folks the click you heard there was the 8-track. I've got it running in the background on test, another 8-track unit. That's ready to offer up to the block. Let's take you across there now. Okay, you'll see that the block face has been cleaned. Important to get the correct length bolts too, I've marked all mine and guess what, oh no I thought I'd lost one then let's see it I was going to say I've lost the other bolt but we're good to go Thirteens to do it up, I just go off the feel of the socket on myself, I don't tend to torque these up to the with the torque wrench Mainly because I'm rubbish with torque wrenches. 13 needed, coming up. And that's that. That's one thermostat housing on two very nicely clean surfaces with a nice little smear of stagwell seal between it so we should be good there start within you could argue that you could have seated the rubber onto the with the well seal the rubber seal of the stat but i don't think it's a big deal there we go I just get a feel for it. Really, we should be talking them up. You know, it's a pain looking up all the talk settings. A lot of them are set standard. Anyway, naughty on my behalf. On my behalf. Right down, I point you to the same principle now with the water pump. But first, before I commence this filming, I'm going to find the bolts, correct bolts for the water pump. I'll be right back. Okay, continuing with that, I'm going for the water pump bolts. You'll see, I've started to strip Papa's KP's engine bay down. The bolt we need is just at the top and it supports the alternator bracket as well. So I'll be putting them on in conjunction, but not tightening it up on the block. I'll nip it up so it grips the, the uh, gasket. But uh, we need to leave that flexible later on. <clears throat> We're not going to fit the engine with the alternator. It's easier to put the alternator on when the engine's been installed. So that to be noted, not to be tightened up. So I'll be pinching that off there in a sec. I'm just draining the water out now. I'm going to take out the. I'm going to take out the uh, radiator. So it's right out. And bit by bit, we've got to make this with many parts removed off here as possible but making it still so I can drive it into the garage and we also want to re remember where each bolt is for the lower must admit the radiator mount bolts are easy to recall the radiator will just slide out I'm going to try and do this one handed the usual and other cliches you can hear the water slowly draining out. Water pump on this car was faulty and it's a new one. So there you go, rest my case everyone. It was a new Chinatown pump that failed straight away. Our rod descends. The joys of one hand will be okay. Radiator may try and slip away now. KP's old engine breathes one last breath. Radiator is okay. 
alternator that with the bolts put back through so we don't forget we can take the fan off we can install that I think that's one which we will put on the engine although I must admit you can install that with the grill off so we may as well take the grill off for five minute job for the grill it's easy to put the engine in without the fan getting in the way and catching the blade so we won't put that on either I'll just undo that what else this hose can come off heater hose and I'll be able to get to that a little bit easier I want that bolt at the moment anything else that we need the alternator bracket bolts we'll need them that can be bolted on actually now and if there's anything else that's gonna oh, I'll take the I'll take this off just so it's out of the way I won't disconnect any vac hoses or the car won't start earth lead has to stay on so really we can only really get that could get the bottom crank pulley if you wanted as well probably uh, I could get that actually then that'll help me set the timing up might pinch that as well take this water pulley off and the bottom crank pulley might need the puller so it's good to get the grill off so we can get the puller on let's get the grill off fan off bottom pulley because again it doesn't need that to start here we go slowly stripping this down for the transfer across but keeping it running both those cars out KP driving right into the middle of the garage hopefully that's what we're going to be doing underneath for the uh, block and tackle undo all the housing bolts the bell housing bolts start a motor off battery off battery off first then start a motor stop any sparking cables then uh, hoist away wish me luck we're continuing on I'll actually go and fit these on the pump and they're done because they're not belonging on that pump so yeah we've got an alternate we've got a cam case retaining bolt on the bottom it's that one I want and that one there I'm just going to see what size it is it looks like 17 so that's the one we want so we need a 17 socket now for this water pump will fall off of course but I say 10 seconds driving it into the garage will be fine even so the engines are right off so need stripping so it won't matter Oop, it's ready to fit so it's seal time really nice machine face that the difference between a rubbish pump for the price it's not worth it you know, what's a recovery at roadside going to cost you? Whoops!
rudely interrupted, what's a roadside recovery going to cost you? You know? Right, let's offer that up. Don't know why I put it there. <laughs> okay. Be right back. Here's another time saving tip for you when taking off your, your bottom pulley. If you're still in the car, get a 19 on it and put it in gear. And you might be lucky. I tried that, but it just moves the car. You can put the handbrake fully on, I suppose, then use a breaker bar. Or, if you want, you can just use an impact gun. You'll need a little flexi adapter, but this always works. Straight away. Crank this bolt out with no fuss. Saves messing around. So that's what we used, our Clark impact gun again, saving the day. This has turned out to be a great little tool, by the way. This is one that I recommend from Machine Mart, a Clark impact driver, not for industrial use or um, daily mechanics life, but for us occasional users at home. Get yourself one of these Clark model number is, it's a CEW 1000, I think. Looks like it, nice that. Got me out of a, a lot of tricky situations, so a flexi joint was needed there just to get because of the the valance panels in the way, the inner valance. That uh, takes us to the pulley itself. Now you usually need a puller on these. I seem to recall that I put this on with copper grease. So if I get my breaker bar, we're going to see if it comes off. Now I think the breaker bar is resting on the camera, so you may move. Yes, you did. You moved a little bit. I don't know if this will come off. I copper greased it. Yes, it worked. Look at that. I'll save another time saver. Because we put the grease on, I'm off to do it opposite sides. A big, long breaker bar here. Look. So, I'll be careful. There's a. There's the. Can go against the water pump, that's all right to do that. Opposite sides when you do this. This breaker bar's got a little kick heel in it, which helps with this. It's reached a certain point. There we go. Got it from just on the inside. So that's off as well with no fuss. We can go and put that on and then we, now we can time the engine up. This will still run without that wheel, do not need this. So we can still drive into the garage everybody, don't worry about that. I wouldn't want anyone keeping awake at night saying, did you get it in the garage? I know things like this can keep you awake. So for the, the super fans, we're going to get that bottom hose off as well. Now that we've got access with the grill off makes life easy for this ha huh. oh i was going to say that it's not a, a slot a slot head but it is get that hose out of the way the water pump will probably fall off i don't think there's anything holding it on is there i can see that bolt that i need but i can't take that off because the cam belt securing bolt Cheap quality hose clip on this, not a Jubilee. I like stainless ones. I do not like these galve ones. This won't be going back on. I'm going to put a, a proper Jubilee stainless steel one on. Why did they even make them that aren't stainless? It's stupid. They just corrode. You can see this pump's been leaking as well. That pipe off. And also someone said to me, how come you, you grease your pipes? Your hose pipes? What a stupid idea, they said. Attacking the rubber. Let's have a look. This was a new gate bottom hose. No, not attack the rubber, dickhead. And the poke, and it came off easy. I rest my case. Armchair idiots. Right next. I'll take you away from this place. See you in a sec, PC. It's called Seeing the City. The Watching Project KP. It's nuts. 
Okay, copper slipped up the end of the crank and we've got your source to just get that pulley wheel off. I've nicely made a white marker on the top dead centre mark so when we come to time it up, the timing light will pick it out nicely. Don't put it on or if you've got it already on, mark that up with a nice white line. Dun, 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 don't do not do it. I use a welding rod and dipped it in some white paint. I also highlighted the marker on there because that's often hard to see. So some paint on the timing marks. This pulley can go on. I'm happy that a 600 pulley is the same size as a 2 litre. In other words, the end of the crank on these is the same size. I didn't have a crank bolt anyway or a bottom pulley. These bottom pulleys are elusive. I think you can get them from Burton's but they're very expensive. That one's tightening up, it's only a 19. We can then get a span on here and turn the engine to top dead centre. We're going to do the top dead centre by feeling the piston coming to the top, piston number one, coming to the top of its cycle then. We're going to turn the cam to line up the cam marks and then we can fit the belt. I can't take the belt bolt off the other end it's coming up for you guys oh that's on the ground floor top floor here we need just around there we need this the spring has to lock i'm just trying to remember how this works it always gets me this every single time this spring and the locking bolt has got a star shape in the end of it I'm sure, sorry I've hit the tripod, damn, damn it, sorry. Nothing worse than that, unprofessional camera work. Nothing worse, no excuse, sorry. Right, yeah, some later ones didn't have the star drive at the end. I don't know why, but they didn't. I need to go back to the to KP and have a look how this, because I'm still, I'm still confused after all this time, you idiot. I know this goes here. I know that little tab is spring loaded and has to push out. I can't remember what bolt goes there. Oh my, oh that's the locking bolt for that. Yeah, that's right. What bolt goes here? Oh, that's the funny star bolt. Is this the right way around? I don't think it is. I think that is that way. No, that makes it the same as well. I'm so ridiculously confused. This gets me every single time without fail Every engine I've ever done, this has confused the living daylights out of me. Does that put them down on there? Does that... Oh, I'm going back to the engine. <laughs> it's not often I struggle, but I must admit, this gets me every time. That goes on there somehow, and I can't remember. How many engines have I done now? See, I'll go back to Papa and have a look. Come on. Right, let's go and have a look. Did I call Papa KP or KP Papa? Oh god. Right, this is what I'm talking about. And you're in natural daylight. That's a lot better than inside there, isn't it? Look how clear it goes when you're outside. Right, the spring hits the top of that. And we're, oh, and then the bottom tab, right, it's pinched between the tab and the top of there. But why would you... Oh, I see. When you tighten this up, it must lock the spring. What the hell is the point of that, though? Um, why would you lock the spring? Oh, I don't know. I'm still confused. Oh, no, I've got it. I've got it. Right. This locks the plate it's nothing to do with locking the spring this locks the back of the plate so that could be any type of bolt with a domed head on it that's all that needs to be the reason it's this is it's shaped that way you could get away with not having that actually could undo this i don't think that would move if the other bolt was tight you'd be, you'd be risking it well uh, i don't know what i'm gonna do now i'm actually stuck because I need that bolt, but I don't want to lose the timing on this. Hmm. I wonder if I jam the wheel, undo this bolt, then just then not have the spring and just bolt it back on. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to nick this. 
and then just put a normal bolt to lock the tensioning wheel back where it was so if I don't do that and start it it's going to just slip the slip the uh, the timing then I won't be able to drive in I'll have to push it into the garage which could be done it's just easier this way I've seen the set right I've sussed it I managed to get that part off and lock down the tensioner wheel in um, KP with another bolt that won't move so that's good so we've now got this and I've worked out how it how it goes the spring doesn't go on that it went on its own it goes on that and how it works is this star drive it's actually just a star drive the socket number four it is in case you need to know if you're going to take this off on yours it's an m8 star drive look and that fits in the end of there sykes pick events offered a special tool for this i don't know why because it's just a star drive but there it is the sykes pick events tool and that's uh, tool number 018600 Sykes, but that's actually twisted. You can see it's got a twist in that. I thought that twist was intense. I bought this secondhand uh, jumble and it, it fits, but doesn't fit as good as the M8 drive that I've got there. That's a much better fit. So I'm not use the Sykes one. Anyway, when you tighten that up, it locks this it locks that plate to the block to the head uh, so you don't fully tighten this yet because what you need to do once you've installed this spring here this spring's compressed now between that post which also serves to mount the cam cover the post has got a groove in it that's not just a bolt that's a bolt with a groove for this spring edge of this the tail of the spring to sit in the other end of the spring tail goes on the tab of the bearing, the, uh, the tension of bearing. And then what you do, if I push against this now, as long as that's not too tight, it tensions up. And the idea is you get a, a, cro uh, a breaker bar, a lever bar, and you lever this up to the top of this elongated slot. So compressing this spring and making this, want it to flick back this way towards the right of your screen but you lock it with this bolt so that it can't spring back yet and only when you're ready with your cam belt you loosen this bolt which then loosens the plate and it, it flicks back but this time hits the cam belt and tensions the cam belt and keeps it under tension you then do a few rotations of your cam belt and once you're happy with the timing and the cam belt feels right half turn you then lock everything together and it actually i don't think it's designed to be constantly pushing against the belt I think that you lock it together and then that's it, it's set. So it's a way of tensioning the belt. I, su I suppose you could get away without a spring and tension the belt with this plate yourself and then try and lock it, but this just makes life easier. It's probably for fitters in garages to get a more consistent belt tension. So that's how that works. Torch around this side might help a bit. There you go. A go. So I had to, I had to remember, rem, keep getting worn out. I had to remember that. So I'm gonna get the breaker bar and tension this up and lock it in. Then we can then install the um, the cam belt itself because everything else is in place and time everything up. Okay. Right, you'll see how this works now. And by the way, look at the shape of this bar. It's perfect for this job. It goes in like that, then up onto the wheel. The wheel also turns it's not rubbing and then that's now see how that's pushing back on my bar so i can get a bolt in at the top if this is the right bolt i think it is it's too long that bolt all right we need the right bolt that's way too long for this application i think i don't know how far you'd be winding that in i'd say that's probably too long i'm going to slightly shorter one but you would lock that all the way up and hold it in place and then it would do that that's slightly locked because there's a little bit of tension on this here but that's how it works with the breaker bar the right shaped bar for me is perfect that one great to get those can I falter for that one thank you and um, 
and Matt helped me with that breaker bar. So, I'm going to go and find the right little securing nut. This is not it, and it didn't come with one. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, I've got the correct bolt now, and I've pushed all the way up to lock the tensioning wheel back on that spring pressure. So if I nip this bolt up, it holds that there. It won't move. If I was to release that bolt now, this would ping out under the tension of that spring. So that's how that works. So I've refreshed my memory. I'm happy about that because I was, uh, get a little bit, well, I don't hardly ever get stressed or annoyed actually. I think that's completely wrong for me to say because I don't. I'm very patient and um, patience pays off a lot of the time. Got to be patient if you want to build. If you wanted to build Bramble, what an epic swampy times too. Bramble was a lot more of a challenge than swampy. Swampy was easy compared to Bramble. That Bramble took some patience and some skill. I'm telling you. Okay, that's on. Now we can time up. So we've got to go here now to the moon and the mountain. What the hell's the moon and the mountain? You say. They call it that as well, how it looks. Can you see that heart shape here? The torch is shining right through it. There's a little pointer that needs to go to a dot that's located on the cylinder head. So you line that pointer up with the dot on the cylinder head. So that pointer there, we get a 17 or is it a 19? Can't remember. Turn this round, the camel turn. Then you'll see a dot on the cylinder head, which I can't see just yet. You get, oh, you have to see it through the window of one of those. Ha! And the, uh, would have been easier with the firmster housing off. Ha, 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 ha. You can still do it, but this would have been easier. So, and then we turn to the engine. We'll be turning the engine until the piston, number one piston, is at the top of its stroke. And that is lined up. See, the thing is, the cam turns half the speed that the engine does. The reason for that is it's a smaller sprocket at the bottom of the engine coming down. Coming down. At the bottom of here, see you saw the sprocket earlier, the tube sprocket behind there is half the diameter of the top one. Oh, it could be less, but it's certainly smaller diameter than the top sprocket. So the engine can turn a lot more than the top. So engine turns twice the speed as the cam does. And that's how it gets confusing because you can line this up and it can be out of phase with the valve timing. So you've got to get it right. So yeah, that's how it is. Once that piston's at the top, that could be an exhaust stroke. Or it could be a compression stroke. You see, so you've got to you've got to get it right. It took me a while to get my head around the principle of this. I eventually got it. I'm going to now get the spanner and rotate everything. I'm going to line this up, this wheel with a 19. It should turn over. By the way, we're about to find out if the engine turns over. It could be seized. There's one thing we didn't even consider, despite the fact that. It's had oil down the bores. It's it's lived with oil down the bores, and then recently, the last few days, I've put Bulldog down there. Let's see if it turns. Right, I'm about to see if the engine turns over. It will be locked in the cradle. This will take a little bit of nip up at first. <clears throat> Please turn over. Yo, oh, easy. Absolutely easy, look, with one finger. This ain't seized. Look at this. That's a relief. There you go. Where's my little... Where's a little finger? With the little finger. That's free as anything. It feels too free to be fair. That seems too... I know there's no sparky plugs in there. That's uh, very free. <laughs> I don't even need the breaker, but it's a 19 spanner for that one. Well, that's good. So let's get on to top dead centre then. Look. Now, only at that point, but a bit harder there. But there's nothing I can do. We're, we're committed now, anyway. So the timing marks are here. 
there that's TDC and that piston's at the top I checked that by just feeling in and that's the exact point you can put you can put a gauge in uh, you can use your um, dial gauge if you really want to get it right because this isn't always correct so I'll show you what I mean this is stuff I've slowly learned I'll get the dial gauge I don't know if you can still if this I'll be able to set this up for you let's just see we'll look through the viewfinder I'll come really really around the side try and move that camera nice and slow for you I'm on a tripod you see so it creaks and does bits and bobs so I've got this I don't know if it's long enough to go into the plug you'd have to put something on the end but you can do this you can put this is magnetically mounted you find a place that this will fit and this gauge measures very small movement you see it so even though you've got top dead center and even though you're feeling with a screwdriver it doesn't mean to say that it's exactly at the crown the top point this would give you an indication because you'd see the needle bring it onto the face of the clock you'd see that deflect and then peek out and then start to make a return and at that point you'd slightly rock the crank just a little bit until that needle was bouncing on its peak then its return and that would be true top dead center as opposed to using the timing marks um i don't know how critical that is i don't think people i think only if you were tuning an engine would it become that critical okay so that would be the idea with the dial gauge to find true top dead center but it's difficult i've got a little piece of plastic tube and it doesn't really want to withdraw but see that's the idea the piston would push up and you'd get this sort of swap rocking point i'm going around on the 19 and holding a tripod and trying to keep the picture composed all for 4.99 a month on youtube luckily the patrons have saved me just so wasn't happy with the uh, the little dot on the cylinder head so i've cleaned it it was too mucky here i couldn't quite clearly see that dot not as good as i wanted so I put some white paint within the dot, it's stamped into the head. I've took the, the backing plate off and I've put a white mark on the arrow. You can see that now. There. These line themselves up. Now I've greased, copper greased the pulley. And then this tab, there's a tab in this plate. There should be, if it's broken off you're in trouble. There's a tab there that locks into the top sprocket. There's a, also a keystone a uh, keyway thing the woodruff key there's copper slip on so these this fits together that plate locks into the back of this at some point going on to the key need to tap that on now you have to get them right don't like the feel of that Something's not right there. Wood of keys falling out. Whoops. That wood of fallen out. How the hell did that happen? Right. Put it back in. That's the key. It mustn't have been in quite straight. Where do we go? There, that looks straight hang on slightly raised that's it now put that back on i just wasn't happy the way you, you could or couldn't see it like that should tap on quite easily there you go and that plate should lock into it now you're in and i took the thermostat off i couldn't see the stag steel doesn't actually set, it just goes sticky. You, I use the impact uh, gun to whiz this off without turning on the cam. So the impact gun came on and just blew that 17 bolt out. If you try and use a spanner and you've no cam belt, you tend to just be rotating the cam. You can jam something in there. We've got thunderstorms. 
So now, without the thermostat on, make sure you always turn clockwise. We'll go round. Cam lube's on so we're not scratching the lobes, and then we can come round and get that to line up with that better without the thermostat housing in the way. I'm going to bring it level with this now. Big thunderstorm coming in. Unusual weather. Well, it's not unusual, it's just I like a good thunderstorm, I must admit. Can I rotate this? Yes, I can rotate this. You'll hear some thunder shortly. Right, now I can get it exact. That's what I wanted. Can't do it with a the thermostat housing on, that's what we've learnt. It's not right, you're guessing. So, I'm going to bring you exactly in front of it. Hold on. Can you see that now? What I mean. And looking through the lens, according to you, guys at home. Wow, I'm hitting the tripod. Stop it. It's actually good using the camera for this. It's actually easier using the camera than the uh, naked eye. say that's it they're lined up so that's what you do and then your top dead center at the bottom so that's right for the cam belt to go on now so feed the belt in get the right in that way round This is a bit I get confused with definitely every, every single time. I think this is it. I think that is it. Like that. Now, which bit does it take up the slag? Oh, God. Richard. You release something now, and it does it. I think we can put this back on. I think that can go back on. Okay, so I have released the tension on this, slightly slacken that off, then just give it a little turn. And then I think you, after the turn, I think you lock it back down once you've gone round. I think you go round a couple of times. Like this. And check it, should get half a turn on that, which we do. So that's right now. That's tensioned up okay. Lock that in. That stops that moving anymore. Bring you sideways, my hand's getting in the way. And then I think you lock this one with the M with the what is it called? M8 is it? M8. So the tension is locked in position by those two fittings there and that's it now when we bring it round on the 19 spanner that little pointer should all line up so we want to go top dead center when the pointers come round not because this top dead center here now is halfway that's at the top see that's top dead center but that pointer's up at the top, so it's 180. So this does half for each full turn of this. Round we go. So, there. And that's now pointing to the dot. So that's how you do it. That's bang on. So they're both bang on. 
So I think that's it. I'm going to bring it off now and bring it close up to this. Right, so handheld with the camera and you can see that. Down. And you can see that. And that is it. I think that is it. And then that, you want to check that it does this. Half a turn, you can't get any more than that twist so that's tensioned up. That's it, I think. That's how it's done. So I'm putting the thermostat housing back on now. And we're done there. As far as I can see, the engine is timed up. It's time to put oil in it. Oh no, I should have I should have fed the oil. I should have fed the oil first before I put the belt on. Because now it's gonna turn with no oil in it. So we'll have to slowly hand crank it till oil starts to appear. But really we should have been firing that round. Really would have been better. Would have been better to prime it with oil. So I could do it again. I don't see why we couldn't. If I undo the tensioner, I should be able to free the belt off. I suppose I could. There's no harm in doing it. I think I'm going to do that. Well, at least this that's a practice run. I'm going to drop this back. I'm going to take the belt off again. I mustn't lose it at the sprocket, but this can easily all come back off if it did. And uh, I think I'm going to spin that up with the oil in, with the drill on it. I don't want to. I don't want to turn it with no oil in. That's the thing. Right. Okay, I took the belt off again. I'm going to put oil in it and spin, spin around the oil pump. So we've got some 2050 to go in. And then get the oil feeding through. I'm coming out the spray bar. Once we're happy it's all coming out the spray bar, I'll then put the cam belt back. So the amber nectar goes in. Okay, well that's that bit done. Luckily, taking all those bits off the uh, engine hasn't made any difference, of course. I parked, trying to get it right in the middle of the hook, centre of gravity, oh, centralised, not centre of gravity. So yeah, that's that gun, we'll get the lights on. I'm going to chock the back wheels, chock here, just in case when I'm pushing back, it doesn't roll back into Ruby, although I think I'm going to now actually move Ruby out of the way, out of the theatre of conflict, just in case this thing rolls back. Okay, so we'll get, we've actually got proper wheel wedges next door, that's, that might save us, but we've got a couple of proper chocks, block and tackle then. Hook that up, position ourselves, get this out, then nick the rest of the bits we need off this, drop them across, we've got to bring the other engine in, as well on the stand, I've left the channel down here to get it in. You have to use some boards, creeper boards, creep it in. Where's this one out onto a little dolly? I've got a dolly ready as well, so 1600 onto the yellow dolly. Out and then on the uh, engine crane into the area here, push back, lift off the crane, get it in the air. So we will have to be moving this backwards and forwards a little bit. It could be tricky, that's about the only thing that I'm going to struggle with is that I have to go down a ramp to do the pushback. It could be tricky that. That's the only problem I've got. Because I can't have the engine already up there. So, yeah. We're just going to have to try and push it uphill, up that ramp. I can't think of any other way of doing it. I'm going to move Ruby anyway and get this fitted, okay? See you in a sec. Let's get going. Starting motor and all the pipes off first. 
I don't really need to go too high. Starting out the first 14s. Bell housing bolts gotta come off. I've loosened them because this tool I've got doesn't always have the power to get them all the way out. So bottom one, there's none, none in there, there's one in there. So bottom one's out. Anything else in the bottom? No, nope, we can go back up to the top now. So all we needed it. Oh, the exhaust. I'll probably get that at the top. Right, up to the top we go. And we're set. Start a motor and keep them separate. I don't want to lose which bolt was good to work. That's the starter motor out. That's the last of the bell housing bolts out. The clutch cable is off, the exhaust is off. Oil sump is drained, accelerator cables off, choke cable off, water hose is off, that's it, it can lift. I'm going to connect the rope and lift it out. Okay, we're lifting, we're going good. Anything in the way? Move that uh, the tools down. We've got to get the dolly underneath this as well. We clear of the uh, bell housing, engine mounts are off. I'm just checking if there's any other cables in the way. They just the coil's a bit close to be fair, and better with a coil out of the way. But in terms of the angle, we're good. that heater box because I'll not smash your heater box. Right, let's get some up behind the heater box. Clutch is just I really should push back the car like that. Head this way, bring you up now as you follow the action. It seems okay so far. And the question about the height looks like we might just do it that distance there. Get it back enough to. I'm going to bring you round slow. I'm going to get it round enough to get the dolly underneath. So I've got to push the car back without the car rolling downhill. And the floor is mega slippery. That annoys me actually. These tiles are not really made for this kind of operation with grease. Grease is the word that you heard. We only need to get it. Can the car make it just back enough 
without rolling down the hill. There's no handbrake either. It just doesn't work. I, I'll never be able to fix a handbrake. Might just do it for tilt forward. Dolly. Okay, down you go. We're heading this way now. I think there's just enough on it. I just slightly push forward or sideways even. If I hold on, that really is the max. That is the max. Right, come on down. Leslie Travis style. Take clutch off now, so we're lined up. So you were slightly off target. There. That was a bit rubbish of me, wasn't it? So on to the dolly. Here we go. This dolly takes the sun. More water there in the block. Okay, the engine's on the dolly. I'm feeling a bit better after some food. So I need to pull this clutch off. Clutch off first. Whoop, whoops. And then the flywheel's got to come off. So clutch and flywheel are needed. Other impact guns are available. Should have took the top one, left the top one till last. But, uh, I think you'll forgive me for that. This is a new clutch. That was a new clutch when it went on. Slightly contaminated. Rusty, actually. Very strange. There's our flywheel with the ARP bolts. There's a spigot bearing in there, but we've got one. So we need the flywheel as well. That's the 5.8 socket on that. Gonna bring you in a little bit closer in a minute. You're in the dark there. Might increase the brightness on the, uh, the editing suite. So I'm gonna pull the flywheel and swap that. We're gonna have to bring the other engine in as well now, folks. 
You're in the dark, aren't you? My overhead light's not as good as the in the garage. I'll use the torch just because there's nothing worse for you at home. Watch out, will you? There you go. There you go. So, yeah, the ARP's there. They're 5 eight, so let's just blast them. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. I've not got my ear defenders on. Is it 5 eight? Yeah, it is 5 eight. I'll go direct onto the nose. Let's get a bit of torque stretch. Let's take these out. I still have Easter Baby. Ooh, in that gearbox. This needs some TLC, I wonder. Where's the torch gone? You were all lit up then. I've mess, gone and messed you up, huh? What are you going to have done? You know that mess there, you know that mess you made? What are you going to have done, look? Freddy, 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 Freddy Mays. The butcher of my fair Freddy Mays. Freddy, Freddy Mays, the butcher of my fair. We can wiggly, we can wiggly woggly this one. Boom! 600 flywheel. And that's it. Oh, rear crankcase leak. Rear crankcase seal leak. I'm sure that was changed. Oh dearie me. I hope uh, my one's alright. I've heard you can pick out a mirror and pull them out. Maybe we should change that, at least change that. If it can be done, we should do it. Because the other seals, in theory, could all be done from the front, with the exception of this. So, is it an idea? Is it a game? Is this an idea? To change this? That's knackered, I can see that it's knackered. That's been leaking. Is it a crime to change a seal? It's under a little bit of tension because the engine's actually resting on that plate. But it's time, I think, to bring the other engine in because as stuff's coming off this, you want to be putting it onto the other engine so you don't lose track, okay? And get the rest of the ancillaries off this so we can cart it out of the way. We need the exhaust manifold, the catch can, oil catch can, engine mounts, a few other things. It's time to strip the ancillaries off this. Strip it all down. I mean, if you want to stay on with me, it's totally up to you. You, you know, you, you can turn off your screens now if you want, but, or you can stay on board with the city. Thanks to the new Patreons and existing Patreons, by the way, keeping the channel going, supplying the last bit of lifeblood for the channel. Patreons, paving the way for success. I know I don't post a lot on there all the time, but... Oh! Oh, man! Oh, my God! Splash it all out. And at different angles all the time. Simple little things, folks. If you wanted to lift the engine, you won't be doing now. Smack. Boom. <laughs> oh, we got a rounded one. Oh, no problem. We'll get that. I seem to recall that being a pain in the arse last time. That was borderline, that bolt. When I put it on, it's come back to haunt me. This probably didn't help being so high torque. I like the way it sort of makes a noise at the end, like it's a, 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 row, a row with you. You get the idea with the exception of that stripped one we're nearly off so i've got a knock a 12 onto it that's the only way i'll do it they're quite soft metal those 
yeah okay and then anything else off this I don't think there is Okay, so what we start doing now is slowly transferring all the components across. It's just a case of winding all the studs into these cylinder block fixing points, engine mounts, stuff like that. Start putting it all together. Distributor, we'll put the distributor on when the engine's in and the fuel pump. Just makes it easier wobbling it into the bay. I think that's it. We can't do the clutch yet because it's on the stand. I have to get it off the stand for that and to get it off the stand you need lifting hooks so it's the inlet manifolds first I won't do the casing cover just yet so I'm going to get all these studs wound in now that's the inlet manifold get some nuts all that on engine bracket on there cleaned up manifold and stag sealed Exhaust manifold next. You don't need sealant on those because they get that hot. It just burns off. So, yeah. Uh, then we can we can lift this then. I'm making sure you're in shot. On in a little bit closer. Okay, this is a spigot bearing going in the reason this engine has not got one is because it was an automatic and they don't use them because they have a torque converter as opposed to the shaft of the gearbox coming in so it goes that way around i've just copied the uh setting off the other one i think there's one end slightly deeper but i think 
to be fair it looks the same both sides so it should just tap in I have to use a socket to get it in but I put some copper slip on it will probably require a socket now to get it flush so find an appropriate tap it in with a bit higher than a bit bigger than that that should do it hopefully this is right I think that's it that's what I'm talking about spigot so the shaft of the gearbox fits into the of course you've got to get our flywheel on now and use our clutch alignment tool to get the clutch lined up properly and then we can put it in the engine bay I think we're ready to go in now I put some copper slip on that to make life easier lining it up it means you can just spin it to get the bolts lined up like this a lot easier if you do that these need torquing up so we've got the torque wrench ready we'll spin them in first and then torque them up I'll get the Haynes manual to find out the settings can't remember I've got the sandwich plate can go on after, don't worry, don't have to put it on just yet. Apologies that uh, there's been a little bit of water on the lens from the storm there. I've cleaned the lens now, anyone who was getting annoyed, sorry. Right, Haynes book, I've cleaned my hands the best I can for the Haynes. Should just be torque settings, quick reference somewhere. I'm missing an accelerator cable bracket. Don't know how I'm going to get around that. I can get it going on the choke, but do we have torque settings? Somewhere. Spec. Here we go. Connecting rods, camshaft, crankshaft, cylinder block, pistons. Exhaust valves, inlets, torque and wrench settings, flywheel, there we go, 46.5 to 50 foot-pounds, 46.5 to 50 on the flywheel. Found a way. A breaker bar. Sorry, cut off then. As you tighten up your bolts, you make sure that you keep that plate central. So line the bolts up first. I'm gonna get the, the battery gun to just send these in quick. That bird you can hear now, I'd like to know what it is. Can you hear that? It's just a it's just a straight call. I've got a, an app on the phone, but it's, I've not got the phone handy. Right, where's my, I'm looking, scanning the floor for my 13 and battery ratchet. As you can see, so if that, if that was the gearbox shaft, you'd want it to be able to slot straight in without hitting the splines out of line. And then I think we can put the engine back in. I've changed the thrust bearing as well for a deeper one. Uh, when you put a pinto into that type of gearbox the bench seat type gearbox it's expecting a kent and the clutch was right at the end of its adjustment i actually had to make a and a bracket some bolts to space it out you might have seen that when you saw me fit the engine but this time i found a deeper reach thrust bearing i'm hoping that's going to make it so we don't need them nuts and bolts holding the clutch cable in I think these are all right while well, holding that centralized opposite sides okay clutch is on I used a 19 on the front crank pulley bolt 
so that I could tighten up the fly the uh, clutch cover bolts as well so both those techniques and now we're ready I think to put it back in I don't think there's anything stopping us It's not centralized, so I don't know if I can slip it on there or not. Let's see. Yeah, we can. That's a good thing with a rope. Get that balance, get that level. The rope is tight. This lets go. We've, had, we've lost the floor. <laughs> Bringing you up. You're about over there. Let me just. Where's my wire brush? I'm just going to clean the ring at the bottom of here. Oh, that's right next to it. I'm just going to clean this. I noticed Papa was leaking. I can see soot blow back on this. Okay, here we go. Sandwich plates on. It's quite a snug fit. Sometimes they don't fit on those dowels and they dangle about, which in case you've got to put a little bit of string through and then slice it when it's offered up to the gearbox. Looks like a bit of another storm coming in. Let's keep going. car forward now folks okay so we'll bring that forward move this engine out of the way grab this wheel we should be able to move that In a bit of a safer zone now, folks. Start going down now. Let me just get this put the seat. It's better. Cables. car can pull towards us, pulling the camera back slightly. Right, better watch it, I'm on the heater box. Off we go. Bring you up a touch.
come car needs to come forward so then use the wheel to drive the car forward so using the road wheel now heading that way Lower well, down touch more. Looking for engine mounts now. Fuel pump hitting the ignition coil. I thought that might happen. That's a shame. Yeah, fuel pump on ignition coil. Gearbox slightly moving as well the main problem I've got is it's getting past the coil now I've got to feel it go I've got to feel it go onto the gearbox shaft I think now it's time to move forward a bit as it will Put a bit of pressure on. I'm going to raise you up. Right, so I'm using the jack under the gearbox and in slow increments just matching it with the with the engine and coming down a little bit at a time to help the two go together. You kind of got it like this where you're trying to match it so that spline fits okay it's gone in not too bad i think we're in now i'm going to lift up lift you actually up on the tripod holding the whole tripod trying not to get the legs of the tripod catching anything as i walk about so we're about to do the final lower down into the engine mount you can see we're nearly in and it's closing up on the bell house inside so it must have been on the splines it would never get that close so it's a question that side's gone in actually i think that's in yep that's gone in on its own so that's good so this really i don't know if i can do it with the camera but i reckon it'll slot in this it should just get it we might have to take uh, even a little bit more off the gearbox because I've jacked the gearbox up it's pushing the engine slightly up now the engine wants to finish and sit down so let me go back to the jack slowly you go up again bring you close in let me just get that jack because it's still got plenty of downward travel to go slowly on it. And it should lower the engine a little bit more. Yep, there you go. Right, that's the gearbox is now free from the jack. This will mean now that the engine should drop into the final position. Which it looks like it is. It's five mil away. I think that's it. I think if I do this now In you go. If I do this now, it should. There you go, landed. Thought it might. That is it. That's precise control. One man, engine in. Okay, I'm putting a lot of uh, ancillary items on. Now we can go down, lower down off. Jacks, it's all bolted up. Start motor, batteries back on. Come in and have a look what's been going on.